This is the Supercoach NRL official podcast. Team List Tuesday with Tom Sangster and Rob Sutherland. Hello, Supercoaches. Welcome to our live React Teams podcast. It is round 14. It's a pretty tough round. Not as tough as last week with um, that, that massive big buy, but still pretty tough with three teams out. Origin players backing up. Wilson Smith is here. How many, how many players do you have on the field? Uh, I, I'm in a bit of a conundrum this week, actually. Last week was fine. I got, I had 15 players, and obviously with the 13 rule, only 13 of them count anyway. Yeah. Uh, but my focus was so much around the buy periods that I kind of neglected these after the buy period rounds, where yeah. you, you still got three teams on buy. And obviously the Raiders, the Roosters, and the Dolphins. There's a lot of Supercoach relevant players from those teams, and I have a lot of them. So um, I, I'll have to boost this week to actually get 17 on the field. Well, thankfully my stuff the buys uh, <laughs> thing, but it didn't go that well last week because I lost a thousand spots in the rankings. But uh, and I only had 11 players take the field. But this week, I actually have 21 players as oh, currently wow. stands. So I'm actually one of these guys who is waiting for people to get dropped from the Origin team and not back up after Origin. Uh, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that happens because I'll then be one of the only people who actually has 17 taking the field. Yeah, I will. I need, I need my Origin players to back up and to boost the, to get like 17 on the field this week. So I could be in a bit of trouble. Rough week. If, if, especially if Harry Grant doesn't back up, that's the one that's like really bad for me. Well, thankfully with Harry Grant, Wilfred Z wrote a great article. Check it out on the site now, either in the Supercoach app, on Code, on the Courier Mail, on Daily Telegraph, wherever you get your Supercoach news. Because a great story, he's ranked the chances of every or Supercoach Origin player backing up. And we've got Harry Grant at 90%. He's backed up basically every origin in his entire career. So he has a really good chance. Then you get down to Nico Hines at 5%. That's what Wilf yeah. is rating him based on turnaround time, injury history, all that sort of stuff. He's taken in a lot of factors. So I would definitely suggest checking out that story. We're going to have some big breaking news. We don't know what it is yet, but Blaze Talangi could be starting centre for the Eels, which would be huge, uh, a really popular Supercoach player with Bailey Simonson out for the season with a knee injury. That said, Trent Barrett could do absolutely anything and he may be on the bench or Talangi could be out of the team altogether. Either way, we'll know in about, what, three minutes or so. Yeah, my, I, I have Talangi in my team. Uh, my main concern is that He's by far played his best games this year playing at fullback and his yep. worst games arguably at centre. So uh, like if he if he his name just start at all, that's like massive for super coaches, but um, I'm still a little bit disappointed about he, it. He's still got that low break even. He's predicted to rise by seventy something K in yeah. his next game. So if you just get one more game out of him and then get that price rise and assess from there. The other big thing this week is Josiah Carapani. He's the most popular cheaper this week. Looks like he won't be there for the Broncos with Tony Staggs back into that team. Having said that, they've got Reese Walsh backing up from Origin. If he doesn't play, then Carapani could easily come into that side in a late switch. Or yeah. it may even happen today in the teams when they drop in two minutes. Yeah, well, I guess that's one we've got to wait to find out. But if, if he is not named, um, well, then everyone who brought him in is going to have to reverse that trade or keep a really close eye on late mail because there's a chance if he is named that he drops out or, or that he's just not named. What do you think of Nico Hines? I said that his Wilfred rates him and, and I agree that he's only a 5% chance of backing up. Do you think they even bother naming him today or is he just going to get dropped out altogether? And I sold him last week thinking that he's not going to back up from these Origin games. Plus his buy schedule isn't that good for an Origin player to start with. I reckon he's going to miss six of eight well, as of last week. So I, I, I was pretty happy to sell. Yeah, I think especially given that, like, it's it sounds like he'll be all good to go for uh, the Blues. Uh, but it, given that he did have that sort of that calf tightness heading into camp and there's injury concerns about him, I'd, I'd say it's... I agree with Wilfred. I'd say there's basically no chance that he backs up. And then given his origin schedule, he won't play that many games over the next month or two anyway. So... I think he's a sell. The other big injury news out of Origin is, of course, Dylan Edwards ruled out. It's a one to two week injury, so I'm not expecting him to be named this week. But if it is, let's say, a two week injury, he misses a lot of footy over the next month um, and then potentially plays in the last two Origin matches as well. So this is a big blow. 
I know he's not a popular sell this week, but I've actually sold this round to Let's Roll Mitchell. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I, I'll be holding him for at least another week until we have a sort of better idea of how long he'll actually be out for. If it is two weeks, uh, then I think there's a genuine argument to definitely sell, um, just because, like you said, like he won't be playing a lot of footy over the next few months. Teams are about to drop. I just want to point out that Code has a really good special at the moment. $59 up front for 12 months or a dollar for the first month. You get Supercoach Plus, you get the articles, you get that story that I was speaking about that Wilfred wrote about who's going to back up. Um, or you can get Supercoach Plus for twenty four ninety five for the season. That has an inbuilt buy plan. So these weeks like this and last week and around 16 and 19, you can just do all your planning within the app itself instead of having your spreadsheets and whatever, you know, handwritten notes or whatever tactics you use. The teams are in. What have we got at the Dragons? Hopefully their Origin guys are backing up. They've named the same 1-17 with... Same 17. Origin stars in the reserves. So, okay. I mean, it's not overly surprising, but you'd, I think that given they're named among the reserves that they'll probably be late inclusions into the side. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough turnaround, less than 48 hours, so we'll, we'll wait and see for late mail. Not a particularly Supercoach-relevant side, so we'll move on to the Tigers, who should be a Supercoach-relevant side because their buy schedule is incredible. They, they don't have a buy in this big buy period. The next buy is in round 26, and that's so far away, who cares? So they should be a popular team, but... There's, There's no just, one really there. Yeah. Like Coruscant, maybe I have Galvin at the moment and I'm happy to hold, but would you be going out of your way to get Coruscant? Uh, well, I mean, given the uncertainty of, of a Harry Grant, which I'm sure we'll see when we scroll down a little bit, if, if Harry Grant isn't named, then I can see myself potentially bringing in um, Coruscant. But uh, that's pretty much it from Supercoach point of view. There's like... There's a ton of guys that are relevant in draft leagues, but in terms of classic, like, it's pretty slim pickings. So they've got Justin Ollum back from suspension. Um, Brent Naden is back from suspension too, but he's on the bench. So this means that Alex Lobb is on the wing. Does he become a cheapy option? What's he, what's he, what's he worth? That'll be his second game, I think. Yeah, it, yeah it's his second game. Um, yeah, bottom, bottom dollar, 204. Um, played one round, but it was off the bench. Bench, I believe, for a score of five. Yeah. So you, you definitely have to take a look, but a guy to keep an eye on. Well, we were just talking about there's not a lot of super coach relevance there. There's yeah. maybe a cheapie, so maybe that's helped relevant over the buy period. I was hoping that Josh Felody would be in that team, but he's not there. He was the cheapie I was keeping an eye on. It may now be Lob. On to the Titans, obviously all about David Fafita. They've got Jaden Campbell back, and he's at fullback, which is interesting. They haven't switched him into the halves or put him... Oh, no, he's not. No, he's, he's on the, the, no, the reserve. The... Keanu Kinney's still right. at fullback. Um, Foran's back, um, and looks like... Sammy's back, Jojo Fafita's back yep. as well. Supercoach-wise, obviously, it's David Fafita. I've owned him for a while. He's one of the... But I, I talk about it all the time because one of the best things I've pulled off this year in Supercase. <laughs> so I've had it for about two months and I'm extremely happy. Would I be getting on this week? Absolutely. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge with Origin. If the Maroons lose, then Fafita could easily come into that Maroons team. If there's even one injury for the Maroons, it could easily come into the team. There's, there's so many moving parts in here. Even if he does play Origin going forward, I still think he's a great purchase because he's just so much better than anyone else at that position. Yeah, I, that's one of the, been my biggest regrets of the season is I still don't have David Fafita, uh, but given I have to make so many trades this week, he's definitely one I'm looking at. Um, and The only way I think I can do it is moving on Angus Crichton, who's on by this week, but I, I'm almost in a position where I just have to do it, even though I want to keep Crichton. Um, and the South matchup, I think, is great. At the Rabbitohs, they've got Cody Walker back from a calf injury, so he comes into the halves Jack, with Jack Whiten, and Dion Talpart moves to 18th man. Uh, they've got Richie Kenner coming into the centres as well. Super coach wise there's a lot of chat about Latrell Mitchell. He's pretty popular this week. I'm really tempted to get on because even though it's been a tough year for the Rabbitohs and it's been a tough year for Latrell as well with the suspension and, and some off-field dramas as well, he's actually done really well in Supercoach this year. He's essentially going as well as he did last year, averaging almost 80. His price has only dropped 30-odd K. The buy schedule is good. Um, 
there's a lot to like about Latrell, and I think I I will be going Dylan Edwards to Latrell this week. Yeah, I, I can I can understand why, especially given there's a lot of uncertainty about Dylan Edwards, and like you said, Latrell he's had trouble getting on the field at times, but when he's been playing, he's been really really good. So um, even in games where he has been struggling, he has consistently been getting junk. Um, junk tries as well to uh, yeah. pump up his super coach scores, so I can I can get around it. You always love a bit of Latrell junk time <laughs> tries, that's for sure. Cowboys, so looks like all the Origin players have been named to back up, but on an extended bench, so not in the seventeen. Yep, they got one, two. Yeah, all six of them have been named, so that includes Val Holmes, very popular super coach guy, Ruben Cotter as well. So good news so far there. Do you think Scott Drinkwater is still a buy? Um, I, I mean, given the Dylan Edwards injury, I, I think there's uh, logic to moving him on for pretty much any of the gun um, fullbacks. I think Scott Drinkwater, I, I brought him in a few weeks ago and it's actually been pretty disappointing. Um, so I, I, well, I think I would prefer Latrell. Almost. I had the chance to trade Dylan Edwards to him last week and didn't do it when I heard of the Dylan Edwards inju- injury. Um, and I'm regretting it, to be honest, but I, would, I wouldn't be going out of my way to get him in this week. At the Warriors, they've got a whole bunch of guys back. So Charles Nickel Clockstad, Wade Egan, Rocco Berry, Adam Fanua, Blake, and Kurt Capel, Toby Harris. So they've got a really staunch side there this week. AFB, I'm, I was I sillily, sillily, stupidly sold <laughs> two weeks ago when he was stood down. Uh, I'm regretting that now because I sold to Jermaine Hopgood, who at the oh, time was only yeah. just on the edge of origin selection and then got selected ahead of David Fafita. Um, so I'm bringing back Adam from Blake this week. Yeah. He's got a really good buy schedule coming up. Doesn't have a break until round 19. 19's a tough round, but still, you've got a really good run between now and then. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people will need him um, yeah. throughout that period. I held him, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. Uh, like, I knew I it would only be a one or two week <laughs> thing, but... Um, so I'm glad that his name's because I need him this week. Right, at the Broncos, we have Bruce Walsh four name. Origin guys, are they, and they're in the... They're in the starting they're side, They're in the starting mostly. team. So we'll wait and see what's going on with late mail there. Katoni Staggs is back, as Pete Bedell predicted, which means that the cheapie of the week, Karapani, is in Jersey 22. Yeah. So you've, it's, a, it's a tough wait for late mail on that one. They play relatively late in the round on the Saturday, so it's it's not going to be an easy wait. You're probably going to want that cash earlier in the weekend. Yeah, so I think, given that he wasn't that he's only named among the reserves, I'd say for now he's, I mean he's got to be a, a sell, but he's one that could potentially, as the round progresses and late mail comes in, he could be one yeah. um, that gets that starting spot. So the move that would work for him is Walsh out. Selwyn Cobo goes to fullback. Karapani comes in at centre. Yeah, so, which is still a decent chance to play. Walsh has got that knee soreness. He had that facial fracture early in the year. His chances of backing up probably, you know, that I, I would say they're below fifty percent. Yeah, I think there's there's a very good chance that he is a laid out. And given Selwyn Cobo's only on the bench for the Maroons, it makes pretty, it makes a lot of sense that if they do decide to. Uh, rest Walsh. And plus, uh, Cobo was so good in his last game at fullback, so I think it makes a lot of sense if they do decide to do that. We've got some big news here. Nico Hines will be rested this week. It's been confirmed. He's not even in the squad. He's a popular sell. I sold last week, and I'm pretty happy with it. This shows that it looks like they're not going to risk him after these Origin games. I think he probably will miss... Um, six of eight games over Origin, and he's already missed one of those. Yeah. I'm happy that I sold last week, but would you be selling this week? I think now that we know that he's definitely not named and is definitely being rested, I think he becomes a sell for sure. Yep. All right. Uh, well, I, we agree I, there. I'm glad that they've just been transparent. Yeah, they haven't it. stuffed us around. He's not on the reserves or anything. He's just not in the squad. So um, Cameron McInnes has been named back up, so we'll see what happens yeah. after Wednesday night. And um, Teague they got Wilton. Teague Wilton back into the team. That says he's out. Oh, he's out. Teague Wilton out with yeah. a shoulder problem. Talakai comes into the starting Talakai. side. Talakai, interesting. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, um, I think Jack Williams is a decent draft play as well because Cam McInnes, I think he's named to back up, but I think his minutes will be significantly down. At the Storm, there is no Ryan Pappenhausen, which means our man Far Longo continues at fullback. So good news to start there. I can also see that Harry Grant has been named. Yes. 
He's got a great record of backing up. You would think that he plays this match. Yeah, Bronson, Bronson <laughs> Garlic. See what happens. Bronson Garlic lurking on the bench though, so yeah. that's a little bit worrying. So, well, but, I, I guess Grant will play, but his minutes might just be a bit down. Yeah, I mean, but even if Grant does play from the bench, which happens pretty often after Origin, he just has more impact when yeah. he comes on. It's less minutes, but but more attacking stats. Exactly. What else have we got at the Storm? Um, William Warbrick. Yeah, he's this... out, so Grant Anderson comes onto the wing. Um, but that's probably not particularly super coach relevant. At the Knights... No changes. No changes. Despite right. being smashed last week. What are your plans with David Armstrong? Because he's had a couple of really, really good games. And then, for some reason, when it's raining, he has these, these really poor games and, and just can't get any attacking stats. This week, it's a pretty tough matchup against the Storm. He could be depleted. He's still got a pretty low BE. I think it's um, 12 off the top of my head. So you should have at least one more price rise. Buy schedule is okay, um, but they, they've got that buy in round 16. Yeah, I think for me, there's still at least one or two more price rises in there, I think. And yeah. I, I'm just going to have other concerns. So I, for me, he's a hold for now, but... I think he will be a sell contender in the coming weeks. Yeah, could uh, be. Given he'll have probably reached his limit for making cash. And um, like you said, he's got the round 16 buy. So a sell in a couple of weeks. I yeah, think. a definite sell contender for round 16 at this stage. But we'll see what happens. At the Panthers, they've got... Dylan Edwards, not named. Dylan Edwards. N oh, he's listed among the reserves, which is interesting. So oh, okay, he may yeah. even be a lack of inclusion. So, what, four days after Origin, that's, that's he a bit would of a, play? That's, that's a stitch surely up. not. I think if, he, if he's injured enough to be ruled out of Origin, I'd say he's like no chance of playing yeah, two surely. days after he was meant to play. Surely not. So their Origin guys, are, are they there? They've been named to play. Yep. All their origin guys, so we'll keep an eye on what happens there. At the Sea Eagles, they've got all their origin contingent have been named, all three of them. Um, Tolu Kula is in the centre. He's in the centre, not at fullback. Lahi Hopawade is still at, full, at uh, fullback. That's an interesting move. He was popular a couple of weeks ago and then obviously picked up that injury. Yeah, uh, and, and Hopawade um, was impressive on his club mm. debut for Manly, so. Um, I actually, I like that they've done this as an Anley fan. And uh, you can also see that uh, Jake Simkin has been named on the reserves as well. He's yep. probably hasn't even arrived at the club yet. Yep. I think it was it only today or yesterday. He got confirmed, confirmed yesterday, I yeah. think. Yeah, so he might, might have had his first day there today. Uh, also, Ruben Garrick, uh, a lot of people will be relying on him as a popular player, and our man Ben Trebojevic yeah, is I, starting again. I'm very good. happy that they're yeah. both, uh, both there, because uh, I definitely need them this yeah, week. A lot of people will be relying on those two. Uh, at the Doggies, what have we got? Stephen Crichton has been named... Matt Burton, there's a lot of chat that he's going to come onto the bench for the Blues. I don't know if it's going to happen. He's currently yeah. the 18th man. Even if he's on the bench, you would expect him to back up in this game. Yeah, I, I, unless there's a, an injury early on, you wouldn't expect him to play big minutes if he is a late inclusion. Um, if there is no late inclusion, then he'll probably most likely just be on the bench for the entire game. So um, you'd think he's uh, basically certainty to, to back up for the Bulldogs this week. And interesting that Toby Sexton looks to have won the halfback battle yeah. there as well. Yeah, he's made a real difference for them. Two guys I want to point out. First of all, Jacob Preston, talked up big time by Rob Sutherland. And I hate it when Rob's right, but <laughs> geez, he looked good in that. In place of Viliami Kikau, um, working his way back from injury and just, just looked good. If you got on last week, well done. The buy schedule isn't sensational here. He was a last week buy, but he's, a lot of people are still getting on this round. Yeah, for me, I, I mean, I, I hate to admit when Rob was right that he was right last week, but yeah. I think last week was the week to get on if you were going to get yeah, on. Definitely. Um, I, like you said, the buy schedule was not fantastic, so um, for me, I think I think it's a bit too late well, they, now. Well, they do cover the next big buy in 16, but they've got a sneaky one in 15. It yeah. shouldn't be too hard to cover because it's just the one team, and then don't cover that final buy in 19. The Eels... What do we have? Is Blazy Boy there? Yes, he is. Yes. Blaze to Lungy. Named start at centre. Trent Barrett has come to his senses. <laughs> Morgan Harper 
is not there. So yeah. Morgan Harper is in the reserves. This is great news, really good news. I'm, I'm, I would prefer him at fullback, obviously, but I'll take him at centre. Yeah, well, I, he's one of those guys that I was really relying on to be named this week to get a full yeah. team on the park, and I had a feeling that he was going to name um, Morgan Harper, but, uh, I mean, we were talking about it before the show. Like, he hasn't been afraid to make a few changes to the squad since taking over yep. his interim. Um, so Yeah, ju- just on that, thoughts on a lot of people are selling Joey Lasik to Brendan Hans, who played 80 minutes over the weekend. Would you recommend that trade? Uh, I, if you're desperate for a hooker, then definitely. Um, but, I mean, he was named again this week uh, with Joey Lusick on the reserves, so mm. um, good chance that he um, does retain that sort of 80-minute hooking role. Um, and the Parramatta, Parramatta's attack looked a lot better last week mm. with him at hooker, so... Um, it's a bit risky, uh, for sure, but I, I do like it. It's a popular trade. It's the second most popular trade of the week. I've got other things to, to deal with. It's not a big priority for me, so I won't be doing it. I can certainly see why people are. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out there, oh, Mitchell Moses. Thoughts on him as a purchase? Yeah, I think given all the news around Nico and the fact that he will not play this week and will miss a lot of football over the coming weeks. Um, I think Moses is probably one of the standout halfback options. Um, so I, I do like it, but there's there's always the chance that if New South Wales lose game one, maybe they make changes to game two and Mitch Moses would be one of those guys to potentially come into the squad. So there's a little bit of risk there, but as it stands, he's probably the standout option at halfback to replace Nico. Yep, I don't mind that. Obviously, a lot of teams are on the bye this week. Or Supercoach relevant teams. It's only three of them. But we've got the Roosters, Raiders and Dolphins. All have some really popular guys. I'm just going to quickly hit you with a few and see if you think they are sells. Angus Crichton is the most popular sell this week. If you're going to do it, it should have been last week. But I'm going to hold. I can see why people are doing it, but... You should have just pre-planned on this and done it yeah. last week. For me, um, in an ideal world, he would be a hold. I'm probably going to sell this week to David Fafita purely out of necessity to get 17 on the park. Um, otherwise, um, he's someone that I think is, you know, just from what we've seen from him this year, he's a hold for the rest of the season. At the Raiders, we've got Morgan Smithies, who is the second most popular sell. He did a decent job at the start of the year, but he's starting to leak cash, so I think this makes sense. Yeah, definitely. He's one to go for sure. If you can swing him to Favita, that would be massive. And another one I want to point out as well is Trey Fuller. Very popular sell this week. He caught that concussion on the weekend. He's on the buy this round. I'd be tempted to hold because he does cover these next two big buys. Yeah, well, uh, assuming Hammer... Uh, well, he'll be in origin camp, obviously. So yeah. um, assuming he's right with the head knock, which he should be after having the bye week this week, um, he will be filling in at fullback for the Dolphins through the bye period, and his coverage is amazing. So, um, yeah, I think he's a hold as well. Right, so we've got heaps of questions coming through. We're going to get to a couple of them quickly now. Um First time in a month, Tommy hasn't sounded like he's dying on air. <laughs> yes. Had a good rest. I took that, took a couple of days off last week, had a good rest, <laughs> and I'll feel it okay again. Um, drink water, scored two tons in a row, and it's disappointing. I mean, he was bad <laughs> last week. Uh, like, I, I don't know. Uh, for me, he hasn't lived up to what I wanted. Right, I, I think I, I missed I, out I, on I those wanted, like, well. When he was scoring those points on Sunday, I really wanted him in my team, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, but he can be a little bit up and down. Luke Easton is saying, is Walsh a hold? Uh, I sol- I'm sold last week, actually. I was, yeah, yeah, I think... I, I think there's a good chance he gets rested this week, so yeah. I think he's a sell as well. Yeah, he could be a, a big resting candidate going forward. Well, that is it for our live Teams React podcast, round 14. Big thanks to Wilson. We'll catch you on Thursday for our preview podcast, 11.30am. See you then.